Hello, everyone. We are back. I hope you have enjoyed the networking. And now it's time to introduce you to Miguel Perez Colino. Miguel is working in helping land the digital transformation for Red Hat customers by bringing world out to modern platforms. He will tell us about migration analytics, accelerating the move to hybrid cloud through data-driven decision-making. Welcome, Miguel. Hi. You have the micro off no. now. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> really nice to have you here, Miguel. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. I'm a fan of Open Expo. I'm very happy to be joining joining Open Expo and being able to present here. Great. May I get so, started then? Time to talk. Remember that if you have any questions, you can write in the QA the questions to Miguel, or you can also raise your hand and come to the stage with us. It will be really nice. Yeah. So welcome, Miguel and see you a little later. Perfect, thank you very much. So th thanks for the introduction. My name is, uh, as Gemma has said, uh, Miguel Perez Colino. I'm product manager in, in Red Hat and I'm managing the product migration analytics. It's a, a product that we have built to, to help customers um, make decisions, have the right information to, write, to make the decisions with more confidence. So let's get started. Um, What's my team? Where do I work on? Uh, what do we do in my team within Red Hat? I mean, probably you know Red Hat because of Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux. We are we are uh, the greatest vendor in, in Enterprise Linux, and we also are known also for OpenShift, which is a Kubernetes distribution that we're working on, and we're also known for other products like Red Hat Virtualization or OpenStack, which are platforms. And uh, in my team, what we're doing is helping. Uh, increase the adoption of these platforms, you know, helping um, doing uh, ma a migration to hybrid cloud, adopting hybrid cloud. So how do we do it? Well, there are several ways to do it. One of them is optimizing the infrastructure uh, in which uh, where this is going to be based. Also modernizing applications, which this is related to. And uh, the other ways are accelerating innovation by, by providing ways to transform the way you're doing things. So this is what my team is doing, is the Red Hat Modernization and Migration Solutions. And we have different approaches and different tools. So what would be the, the journey to hybrid cloud? What are customers doing to move to, to, to hybrid cloud? So this is the, the, the framework that uh, uh, Amazon made a pretty, Amazon Web Services made a pretty famous, the Rehouse, Repartform, Repurchase, Refactor, Retire and Retain, the six R's in which you decide what are you going to do with your workloads. Before doing that, you have to make a decision on, 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 on which one of those uh, do you want to do. And before that, you have to do a discovery. So you have some tools for the discovery, which uh, I'm going to go through. So first, discover and decide, okay? So you need to, uh, the customers that are moving to hybrid cloud, they, they would like to review and capture requirements and, and process on the workloads. They need to understand what do I have in, in my environment. So translate those, those requirements into, into actions by uh, doing it with technical best practices and generate a solution uh, through plan to, to set up uh, the, the new platforms and moving, moving to new platforms and establishing the right ongoing operations. So how are we helping? Well, in there are two layers that we're working on mainly. One of them is the application layer. For that, we have Pathfinder. Pathfinder is a, a way to, to understand and to assess the applications that you have running in your environment. And with this assessment, understand which ones are more easy to modernize, more easy to go to cloud, more ready to be cloud native and which ones are more difficult or less suitable to move them into containers and to move them into uh, cloud ready, uh, cloud native uh, architectures. So um, this tool is used uh, by professional services usually with our customers. And with this tool, we have assessed a different number of customers in, that we have helped move into to hybrid cloud. We have also migration analytics that I'm going to talk about uh, more afterwards. So this tool is intended to discover what do you have in your environment and provide some, some insights on, on the workloads that are running in your IT to know what can you do with them to move them to, to new platforms and to move them to hybrid cloud. So 
as I'm going to talk about that later, let's take a closer look to the action, to the execution part of moving to hybrid cloud. So we have four parts that require some action. Retire and retain is keeping things the same or retiring them. So there's not much action here. So in the rehouse platform repatriation and refactor parts, we also have built some tools that could help our customers perform the action of migrating to hybrid cloud, the journey to hybrid cloud. How do we do it? Well, we have different tools for different uh, actions. So for example, we have the application migration toolkit that is uh, helping uh, understand the applications within the application, what is inside and how it can be transformed. We have also the cluster application migration tool to move containers from one uh, OpenShift cluster to a different OpenShift cluster. We have also the infrastructure migration solution that could help you bring virtual machines from VMware environments to rehabilitation or OpenStack and also convert to well for all those machines that are running Oracle Linux or CentOS that could be converted in a supported manner to Red Enterprise Linux. In every case, we also have Red Hat services or Red Hat consulting teams that could help there. And this one that is very interesting, which is Open Innovation Labs, which is uh, a full refactor experience, a full experience on how to do things in a cloud native way, including methodologies, including processes. So let me go through them one by one. So the first one I would like to talk about is uh, infrastructure migration solution. We have a solution that could connect to your VMware environment, discover the VMs, and you could migrate them to Red Hat Virtualization or Red Hat OpenStack. Coming soon, we have a, a new product that is called OpenShift Virtualization, which is being able to run uh, VMs within your Kubernetes cluster. It's right now technical preview, and uh, it's expected by the end of the summer to be uh, GA. So with this, uh, what we do is we connect to, to a VMware environment, and we discover what is in there. And then we deploy a rehabilitation or rehab open stack environment, and we create an equivalence. That equivalence is this infrastructure mapping. So we map uh, a cluster with a cluster in source and target. We map uh, storage domains. We map networks. And we have everything mapped. We deploy a conversion host. That is the, the, the one that is going to do the, the conversion itself. And we could perform. <clears throat> mass migration from VMware to rehabilitation. As a matter of fact, we have used it already in, in different clients, and we could do uh, very large mass migrations. One example would be uh, Corpflex, uh, where we migrated uh, 3,000 VMs uh, for this uh, customer, and it was a pretty nice success. If you look for it in the internet, you go to Red Hat Corpflex, you will find uh, more information on this use case. We also have the classic application migration tool which uh, is intended to migrate um, uh, applications that are running OpenShift 3 to OpenShift 4 and be able to use all the benefits that OpenShift 4 has, like, for example, operators so or Istio or many other things. So you could migrate uh, the, the, the containers and also the, the stateful parts of the, of the applications, the persistent volumes from one cluster to another. And, and then convertible. I mean, if you're running CentOS, sometimes you wonder, oh, I have a running workload on CentOS that is becoming critical, and I would like to have some support, or I am required to have some certification. So how I do bring that to Red Hat Enterprise Linux? Well, we could have an engagement with you and, and via Red Hat Consulting, and our consultants could help you convert those CentOS to Red Hat Enterprise Linux with a tool called ConvertRel in a supported manner, so you know that the target uh, VM or the target machine is going to be fully supported by Red Hat. So these are the tools that could help you do the migrations. Also, the application migration toolkit. This is a tool that uh, can be used to, to uh, examine uh, Java applications. You could get a Java application, uh, bring it to the tool. It will decompile it. It will analyze it. It will tell you, OK, which classes are not suitable to move them. They are not, for example, Java EE compliant, or they are not suitable. To, to move into containers for some reason, like for example, accessing, uh, having uh, shared sessions. And you will be able to, to assess every single application with every single class that could block it from being moved into containers. So with this, you could, again, review your Java applications in a very efficient manner and be able to, to understand its, its, uh, its requirements to move them into, into uh, JBoss, CAP, Tomcat, or containers. So there are many rules and, and 
and it could be used in, in many ways. If you're doing it massively, of course, there are uh, Maven plugins and command line interfaces that could help put it into a pipeline and be able to analyze the applications in an, in an automated manner. There's also a plugin for Eclipse, just in case you want to include it in your in your in your environment uh, when you're in your IDE when you are developing. So you could check uh, run all those checks directly in your IDE. What else? Open Innovation Labs. This is a, a very cool engagement that we have that is run by Raha Consulting, in which uh, customers uh, spend uh, several weeks with us. And they could create an application from, from zero uh, without interferences, understanding how to apply the, the, the best methodologies, agile DevOps, linear X design thinking, and really be able to understand, okay, this is how it's got to be built. Many customers have built applications with us this way. And then when they went back after the residency to their, their own uh, companies, they started implementing all these changes that they learned and becoming much more effective. So these are the tools, but uh, let's go into migration analytics, okay? I gave an overview on all the tools that we have for, for migration to help customers in the journey to hybrid cloud, but let's move to, to migration analytics. What is migration analytics about? It's about drawing the map, drawing the IT map. It's like when you get to a new city and you want to say, let, let's say, I would like to have something to eat because I'm hungry, you know? And it's like, okay, what do you want? It's like, oh, I, I very much enjoy Japanese food. Where can I find a Japanese restaurant? And somebody gives you a map, you know? This helps a lot. We're trying to do the same. We're trying to discover what do you have in your, your infrastructure and which status is it and what are the chances for you to, to move it. So we're trying to draw the map. Sometimes you have a very simple IT map, something like this, you know, this is Wichita, Kansas. So it's a very simple map. You know all the streets, you know all the corners, you know all the places. But sometimes it's more like this, Berlin, right? Huge map with many places, many corners. It's even changing. So it's like, okay, how do I build this map? You know, how do I get to know what do I have in my own IT? That's what migration analytics is for. So what we do with migration analytics, if we leverage a tool that we have that is called CloudForms that can connect to vSphere. So you deploy this, it's, it's just a, a, an OBA file and an appliance that you deploy on vSphere, you connect it to your own vCenter and it will extract all the data, uh, all the metadata from the VMs and it will show you, okay, this is what we have. So what are we doing with this data? Um, first, we are putting it in a file, what we call a payload uh, for two reasons. One, if you have a, a disconnected environment, you could get your laptop connected to it, uh, um, deploy CloudForms, extract the data, and then connect it to the internet and upload it to cloud.com. Second, you will be able to review all the data that you're sharing with us. So you will be able to check that what we have in there is just, I mean, uh, VM names, uh, configuration on, on BSV, if they have uh, something like a CPU affinity configured or not, uh, and things like that, you know, metadata about the VM which can be later on uploaded to cloud.com. And in there, we have this application, Migration Analytics, the service, that uh, has a set of rules that are checks that we would perform if we were uh, on-premise with you check, uh, reviewing the VM. So we can run all these checks before doing anything and review with you what could happen in the migration. So we provide a set of reports that I'm going to review that will help you um, understand what are the, your, your choices, your options, and what can you do with your current workloads. So, as I said, we perform the data extraction. With that data, it can be unloaded to cloud.com. We generate the reports, and then we analyze what are the recommendations. What do we have under the hood? This is running on cloud.com, running on OpenShift. We have used all Red Hat products, part and flight for the, for the, for the front end, then three scale API management. We have used Red Hat Fuse uh, as a service bus. We have used uh, Red Hat AMQ uh, Streams, which is uh, our supported version of, of Kafka. Uh, well, it's it's completely upstream, but it's we just package it and support it. And we have Decision Manager, which is our role engine, of course, OpenShift and, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So. What is the 
journey? What is the process? First, you want to do a migration. You think, okay, does this make sense from a business perspective? Okay, so first, okay, we analyze the the cost reduction that you could uh, uh, achieve by doing a migration. And we have a pretty good estimate. We have uh, built um, a curated set of data that could help you understand, okay, this is how much am I going to spend and how much is this going to cost and how much I'm spending now and how much am I going to save, okay? So with this, you could have a good estimate to get started, to understand the business case, to understand that it makes sense and to be able to say, okay, go, no go phase, let's go uh, ahead. So for that, we have the initial savings estimation. I'm going to show it afterwards in the demo. And what it provides is, uh, as I say, uh, an, an educated guess on how much you could uh, save by moving from uh, platform A to platform B. What else? Okay, migration implies risk. We need to understand the risk. So how do we understand the risk? As I said before, we have uh, something we call flags, which are things that could cause the migration to be difficult, okay? So we detect those flags, like for example, shared disks uh, between two VMs that could not be migrated twice. It has to be migrated only once, the attach and then reattach. So we assess the risk by reviewing the workloads and revealing the characteristics of the workloads. And uh, with that, we can help you build a project for migration. This uh, simplifies what we call a discovery session. A discovery session is what we do when we engage with a customer that wants to, for example, do a migration. And, um, and we put all the stakeholders together and we say, okay, what is the status? What is the best approach? This, are what, this is what we recommend. And then we get all that information, we put it together and then we propose a project and we propose on a scope. So with this, we simplify that and we make all, those, uh, all that scoping much more precise and much more easy to manage. So, okay. How do we assess the risk? We have a workload migration summary in which we assess how easy or difficult it is to migrate each, uh, each of the VMs. And we also assess other targets for migration that could be interesting. Instead of migrating the VM, we could migrate from one enterprise application platform to another, let's say WebLogic to JBoss EAP. And that's, I mean, that's something that it's, it could be good to be considered. So next step, okay, we have the project we want to go ahead. We want to execute the project. So we need to assess the work loss, what is running there, and then execute the migration, deploy the foundations, find the corner cases, uh, create tests, propose actions, uh, run these tests, execute the first migrations, do a mass migration. So for that, we have what we call the workload line migration inventory, which is a list of the VMs with the characteristics that could be filtered in many ways to be able to say, okay, these are the ones I would like to work with first. So this is what migration analytics uh, is and what migration analytics does. What we're trying to do is helping you build them up and proposing some targets. So you have your targets, your preferences. So if you like Japanese, we show you the Japanese restaurants and your path, how to get there. How do you find the right place for you when you want to go there and when it comes to uh, helping you in your journey to, to hybrid cloud. So let's let's do a demo. Any questions so far? No questions. Let me check the chat window. Okay, no questions. Oh, this is CloudForms. No, you can connect it to many providers. Right now we are connected to just one single provider, a VMware provider. If I go to compute infrastructure providers, I have this provider configured. It's very easy to configure a, a provider here. There are two ways to configure it. One way that is direct way, you just connect to, to vCenter and it extracts the data. But to be able to detect the workloads, what we do is we leverage a feature in CloudForms that is called Smash State Analysis that will uh, make a snapshot of disk and introspect the disk. Of course, it doesn't have to do it to all the VMs. We have to choose which ones we want to do it, but we can do it. And this way we could detect what is the workload running by the files that are percent on, on the system. So once we have configured this, we could go to migration, migration analytics. If you want to run migration analytics and you need a, a CloudFront subscription, we can provide uh, a trial, of course, for free. So you could go here to migration analytics. 
and it will examine the virtualization providers, and it will provide a, a summary. Okay, this is a tiny lab environment that I have running on cloud, so it's nested virtualization. Excuse me for the performance. And in here we have several VMs. We could collect inventory data, and we have the basic data. I mean, if we are not running the smart state analysis or detailed data, if we're running it, so I can choose which provider and which uh, way to start data, and then I click continue. We'll collect inventory data. Normally, to collect the basic data, it could take you like I don't know a couple of hours, three hours, maybe, depending on the size of the environment, of course. And if you want to collect the uh, detailed data, um, it could take, I mean, you could make it run in like, uh, say, two, three hours, leave it for a couple of days, it will extract the data, and then you come back and you have all the data available. So this provides an inventory file. I can download it and I can save it. Okay. And now I could go to cloudoverhad.com. So let me open it from the very beginning cloudoverhad.com. You only need a, an account here which uh, do not have any cost. So in Cloud Over Hadocom, you have plenty of tools that are software as a service from the Hub Insights that could provide you information on your Red Hat Enterprise Linux or your Red Hat virtualization platform, even SAP. It has rules to detect uh, issues, sometimes before they happen. Um, I have one anecdote on this, is that I once I spent like uh, several weeks in a previous job building a Samba configuration file and I use it like everywhere since then. And I used it uh, on Relate and I connected to Insights and it told me, you have a mistake in your configuration file in Sam. And it was like, that's not possible. And it was true. I mean, I had a mistake in my configuration file that I built so carefully. So Insights can provide you also information and things like that. If you have misconfigured something, if you have a, a problem, a security patch, or even if you have a memory leak, that it could be uh, in the memory. So let's go to migration services, migration analytics. We can enter here. And what we do now is we can just upload the file that we have just downloaded. So I could go here, get the file, open it, put in a name, open Expo Europe. Okay, description, test. And then this is the growth rate that we expect to have in a hypervisor. You know, if I'm going to add like 5% more hypervisors next year, if I'm not going to do it, if I'm going to go just 4%, 3%, maybe I'm growing a lot and it's like 7%. So let's leave it in five. And then this is planned for a three year uh, migration uh, to accommodate on the uh, enterprise license agreement that VMware usually has, so which are three years. So if you want to do it in two years, you could do it. So you could go here and say, okay, zero, and then here you go 70, and you could migrate everything in, in two years. And of course, the, the return of investment is, is, is higher. So we can create this report. Many of the migrations we've done, uh, even large ones uh, are closed in, in a bit more than a year. And we have this, this one. So let's, let's see an example, okay? This is a, a report in which we have 314 hosts. The estimated savings are around a bit more than $900,000 in migrating in three years. This is taking into account the cost of maintaining VMware support for the current infrastructure and the cost of the rehabilitation deployment, okay? So what is the, 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 breakdown, the breakdown of this? You could have the breakdown here in percentages. You could have the breakdown here in, 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 uh, in numbers. So you have here the cost of VMware maintenance, the cost of the rev hypervisor that you're going to need, the cost of uh, the growth of the hypervisors. Of course, training, we're going to provide training and we're going to provide training in a way that I think is very interesting. These are learning subscriptions. So four people would get a learning subscription in your in your company and they will have access to the full catalog of, of courses uh, by Red Hat and they will they will have a limited number of, of exams that they could take. If I recall correctly, there were three. And then the hack consulting to deploy the new environment to, to help you with the setup, to help you with the test, to help you with the planning and to perform the first migrations. The mass migration is done uh, by the customer and supported by your support team. And then trouble and lodging, just in case there's, there's trouble involved. So with this, you could have a very nice overview on how much would it cost to move from VMware to the habitualization to see if this makes sense. Okay, 
it makes sense. Next step, let's assess the risk. So we have here the workload migration summary. And in here, we check for issues that could cause the VM not to be migratable to OpenStack or to Java virtualization or OpenShift virtualization. So you could say, okay, I, um, I could migrate all my VMs to Red Hat virtualization. I have a very uh, standard environment. Uh, the VMs are very simple and uh, the workloads are suitable. So in here we have an assessment. It says easy, medium, hard. You know, what we do is we find flags. In here I have some sample flags like raw device mappings or shared disks. So if we find something like this, we'll go, okay, this is more difficult to migrate. This is easier to migrate. And you could assess how difficult or easy it will be to migrate your, your VMs. What else? Okay, the number of, of VMs that have a operating system that could be converted to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, just in case you want to. Of course, you could migrate them without converting them, but maybe you want to take into consideration which VMs do I want to convert. Also, if we have found some JDKs, I mean, from uh, since, uh, since uh, some months ago, uh, Oracle, JDK is, uh, uh, requires a, a, a payment. So we have a Red Hat build of Open JDK, which can replace Oracle JDKs. It's what we recommend to run on Red Hat Enterprise Linux for any Java workloads. And if you want to change your Oracle JDKs for Open JDK, I mean, we could help you do it. Then there's the, the application platforms, which are the application platforms that we found and which ones could be migrated to JBoss CAP. And this way you can plan, okay, we have like a lot of web logics, we have 336, so maybe we could migrate them to EAP and save even more money. So you could consider that, we could scope it, we could propose a project to you, and then you could uh, think about it and make your own decisions. Then the workloads that we have found, what workloads are there and the scans run. So with this, you can assess, okay, how difficult is this to migrate? What can I migrate? Okay, so now next step, let's migrate. So for example, here I could filter by, I don't know, a workload and go for Microsoft SQL Server. And then I find that a lot, I have a lot of Microsoft SQL Server. I have 460 and it's like, oh, okay. How big are they? So I can extend it and find the, oh, they are tiny. We have a lot of SQL servers, but they are very tiny. They have a very small disk uh, amount of disk space assigned and they're consuming uh, only two gigabytes of memory. So maybe I could containerize those. So if you go to, to catalog.redhat.com, check what do we have in there, what is supported. So you could check, for example, if I go to certified software, container images, and I could go to database, and then I could go here, Search by Microsoft. And well, we have a, a supported SQL Server, a certified SQL Server Red Hat container for OpenShift. So maybe you could consider moving those to, to OpenShift. So like likewise, you could go and filter by, by Tomcat, okay? Tomcat is a good target. I mean, normally applications in Tomcat are not that large and they could be moved into containers. And we have JBoss Web Server on OpenShift that is our supported version of Tomcat. So you could move them from your VMs to containers and, and test them there and, okay, everything is running. Okay, perfect. If not, I mean, if you would like to check them, we have also application migration toolkit. You could upload the, the applications there and check if there's anything that could be causing any trouble when it comes to moving them to containers and assess, assess uh, the, the migration. So with this, we're providing all the information and all the context that uh, you may want to have to be able to make your decisions on what to migrate, what not to migrate, what is your path to, to hybrid cloud and, uh, and what to do with your own workloads. If you want additional demonstrations, uh, I mean, in this uh, presentation, I have some links on all the tools that I've mentioned before, you know, the Pathfinder, uh, Rehabilitation, OpenStack, uh, how to import machines into OpenShift Container Platform, um, migrating from uh, CentOS to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, the Red Hat Application Migration Toolkit, and the, container, the Cluster Application Migration Tool. So I really recommend you, if you have any of those cases, to, to take a look at these demonstrations and 
of course, engage. Engage with us. We have an email specific for, for, for migrations, for your journey, journey to hybrid cloud. Send your questions, send your doubts, send your suggestions, send your your ideas, or send your your whatever, you know, or send us an email, tell us uh, what's your journey, what uh, do you want to do, how can we help? I mean, we are always listening there, migrate at rehab.com, and um, we'll help you run migration analytics and obtain all this data from your own environment and make your, your own decision. So thank you very much. Any question? Any comment? <laughs> Thank you very much for your presentation, Miguel. Really interesting. If anyone has a question, you can write it down in the Q&A, or you can raise your hand and come here with us. We would like to see you stage. Answer your questions. Really interesting, all the things you are doing. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you like it. I hope that people find it interesting and I hope it can help many people move to the hybrid cloud and move their workloads to, to open source uh, platforms. Yeah, that's good. And are you going to be here later? Yes, yes. I'll stay for a while, yes. Okay. So if anyone has a question, please find me in the tables around and I'd love to chat. Yeah, remember that you can turn on your camera and your micro and then you can talk with the people inside the table you are. You can change one table to another. Yeah. Way. If they don't want to ask here, if they feel more shy or they want to meet you in person, they can go to your table. Yeah, pl please do. Uh, I'll be around. Great. We don't have any. Yeah, we have one question here. Oh, okay, this. But it didn't, it didn't show up. Oh, not a question, but thanks for the pressure. I'm very pleased to see 12 add Firecracker support. I think this is from before. Okay. But it didn't show up the question. <laughs> but thank you. Okay. It's weird. It didn't show up. So. so we don't have any question. But I thank you. So I'll see you around. Yeah. So yeah, so if you want to meet Miguel, he will be chatting in, in the tables. Thank you, Miguel, again. My pleasure. My pleasure. Bye. Bye. Remember that you can find Miguel and the other people in the networking tables. You can join there, meet new people, share your knowledge and your con make your contacts, and see you soon here.